I first became aware of Tom when I was working in my office and I heard this tapping. It kind of sounded like someone was knocking at the door, but there was nobody there. And then eventually I noticed my cat became very interested. We have two windows that go down the sides of the door, on either side of the door, and he was going back and forth from window to window. And I paid attention, I looked, and I saw there was this little bird there on the doormat tapping against the brass plate that we have on the bottom of our door. This was Tom. Tom is a male Eastern Towhee. The, the Eastern Towhee is a uh, common permanent resident in South Georgia, and it commonly occurs around homes and gardens. So it's a, it's a bird people would be very likely to encounter, except they tend to stay in thickets. They like to nest in uh, heavy brush. They forage in the undergrowth a lot. So they're not a terribly conspicuous bird. Initially, it was just funny. It was kind of entertaining for the cat and kind of cute, kind of funny, kind of silly. And then it just became frustrating. And I was frankly quite annoyed that this bird was relentlessly attacking the house, you know, pooping on my threshold um, and just wouldn't stop. I mean, all day long. This went on for quite a while. So what caused this shy, secretive bird to start acting in such a conspicuous and rather bizarre fashion? Birds attacking their reflection or responding to a reflection in a window or a shiny surface uh, attracts people's attention all the time. And they, they, they report it as sort of crazy behavior. But of course it makes perfect sense because these birds are highly territorial and when they detect a reflection in a mirror or a window or something like that, they're perceiving another bird, an intruder. And so the appropriate response for a intruder is to display and to attack. And so that's what's going on. Under natural conditions, a territorial bird will respond to an intruder and the, by far the most common outcome is the intruder flees. But of course, when a bird encounters its own reflection and displays to it or attacks it, the reflection does exactly what the territory hunter is doing. So in a sense, that's an improper escalation of behavior. After tussling with the intruder for a while, Tom flies up into a nearby tree and sings the song that gives his species its name. This is part of his territorial defense. The stubborn intruder, however, is silent. Has he finally left? Tom returns to the base plate, only to find the intruder still there. And so the battle resumes, continuing for days on end. We tried all kinds of things to discourage him. First, we just put a piece of foam board leaning against the door, but he got behind it. Then we extended that out farther, he still came behind it. Then we pressed it up flush against the door, um, and that stopped him, but it was hard to get in and out of the house. After that, we put a piece of fabric covering the brass plate, which he took down, and then we added the blue painter's tape, which worked, but at that point, he started throwing himself against the windows and going up to the top window and looking in at us. as if to see if we were providing sanctuary for his rival. 
So I, I decided to cut him a little window out of the blue painter's tape on the front door so that he could kind of have a, a little mirror there and go and, and see himself and peck it. That helped a little bit. This behavior typically shows up in birds that are common around homes and gardens. Robins, bluebirds, mockingbirds, uh, goldfinches, brown thrashers, and all of those birds are highly territorial, at least during the summer. As our hot Georgia summer dragged on, however, it seemed to take its toll on Tom and his attacks began to taper off. However, whenever anyone parked their vehicle in our driveway, Tom seemed to quickly discover the rival's presence in their rearview mirrors or shiny metal bumpers. My attitude's definitely changed over time. But eventually, you know, if I didn't hear him, I started to worry, like, that something happened to him. Like, you know, I didn't, maybe a neighborhood cat got him or, or something. It was this odd thing where, if I didn't hear him at least a little bit, I I got worried about him. You know, we named him, and, uh, you know, it, it kind of started to feel like part of the family. A little bit of an irritating part, but, you know, family all the same.